So Ted, do you want to tell us about um, the new um, release candidate uh, for FT8 and why it's going to be important uh, for the, the expeditions that are coming up that Bob will talk to us about in a few minutes? My guess is that uh, this new mode is likely to be used by most the expeditions in the future. Uh, what's happened is Joe Taylor, K1JT, and his merry collection of really, really good engineers has put together uh, a new mode. And he does this all the time. Guy should get a Nobel Prize or something. Anyway, uh, it's called Super Fox and Super Hound, depending on, of course, which end you're on. You can get it from Joe's website. Uh, just Google w, WXJT-X and it'll pop up. It's a Princeton site. And um, what you're looking for is WSJTX 2.70 RC5. Uh, that's the latest release candidate. It hasn't been put out as a general release yet because uh, it hasn't quite been thoroughly tested, but it's going to be new grid. What uh, what this mode is is a way to uh, conduct nine QSOs at the same time on FT8 and not. Uh, not share power between the QSOs. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but uh -huh. it seems to be some sort of timeshare where a little blurp of one stream gets transmitted and then a little blurp of the next stream and so on. But they're all transmitted at the same power. So unlike the standard FT8 Fox and Hound, which shares the power in between streams, this doesn't do that. Plus, it's got nine streams. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, there's also uh, a clever little thing there where you have to talk to New Grid K1JT to get a key if you're on a D expedition that will then authenticate that you're actually the guy doing the talking. There's been a fair amount of pirating going on. New Grid. In the uh, in the uh, FT8 standard mode, and this gets around that. It'll actually show up on your screen as New grid. verified. Um, it's all pretty entertaining. It works by taking a chunk of the normal 3KC wide um, slice that you work with on FT8 and transmitting on 1500 KC of it. You, on the other hand, as a hound, uh, transmit what amounts to a standard FT8 signal, which is Red. which is then um, translated at the Fox to a QSO with you. Um, you can transmit anywhere in the in the passband for this mode, unlike the standard FT8 Fox and Hound mode where you needed to transmit up the band or up the slice a little bit. And then the signal got translated down to uh, down to the frequency that the Fox was operating on. Um, pretty nice. You do have to have this 2.70 RC5 to work with it. Everything else should work fine, though. I've been running that release candidate now for a couple of weeks, and I haven't actually heard a heard an FT8 or a Super Fox yet. Uh, K8K on Samoa was, in theory, going to be testing it, but I don't believe he showed up on that mode yet. It will be used for N5J, Jarvis Island, and I imagine it'll get used pretty thoroughly considering how rare Jarvis is. So I suggest that you go get that. 
the the release candidate seems to work pretty stably, at least on everything that I've tested, which is everything except Super Fox and Super Hound. Um, and my guess is that they won't be using any other mode other than standard <laughs> FP8 and I believe 60 meters. Everything else will be Super Fox and Super Hound mode. That's Jarvis Island I'm talking about. So it's a, it's a new way for automated radio to work good. I suggest you give it a try. Uh, to be clear, Ted, they don't have it currently available on JTDX. It's only on WSJTX um, is my understanding. And um, on the spots this, this afternoon, um, it was coming across from Samoa. I mean, a couple of hams said, wow, look at that spectrum. I can't decode a thing. And it's because they weren't using WSJTX in super hound mode. So um, it's going to be real interesting to see it. I haven't, I haven't heard it either. Yeah, I think that uh, it's going to be highly entertaining. And it's also, there's a little curveball thrown in there um, from the standpoint of somebody else trying to clone the software. Everything on WSJTX is public domain, except for a little bit where they generate the, the verification key. And they aren't publishing that little piece of the software. So that's going to make things interesting for derivatives of WSJTX to make it work. Yeah. Will they be operating in this, the normal... Uh... Uh, uh, frequencies, or will they be moving into their own little areas? It won't be on the normal frequencies. It takes up the whole band. So the D-Expedition gets dealer's choice on what frequency it wants to use, but it won't be the standard FT8 frequencies. Right now they're on 91. So 21091, 14091, 28091. That's the frequency that they're picking for Samoa, American Samoa. Not that I'm trying to work it or anything, right? <laughs> well, Samoa has been all over the air. Um, the Samoa stations, I think, by the one of the persons that's going to be on Jarvis, and it's they're kind of testing antennas and all manner of remote control software and stuff like that. Uh, Jarvis is going to be run off a ship to a great extent, and they're linking via 900 mega cycle uh, microwave links to the shore where the station is actually a robot. Several stations will be robots. This is a huge operation. Yeah, I the daily DX. Third of the a million DX. bucks to do it so far. Yeah, the daily DX today said that uh, the first SuperVox <laughs> contact was made on FT8 by a W7, and it was done by a remote operator running the station. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, Ted.